Hi, y'all. Little Vertical Hope today from Faith Builders Ministries. Yay! I was in Hebrews 10, 5 through 7. Again, I'm gleaning from my book, Choices Are for the Living. I just, the Lord just directed me to this book in the last couple of days, and I've just been gleaning from some of the stuff that was written. Um, in Hebrews 10, 5 through 7, it says this, Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. But a body you prepare for me with burnt offering and sin offering, you were not pleased. Then I said, here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, O God. Now, listen, many of you, when you think of the will of God in your life, you may think of everything perfect and rosy and everything's going great. And that's the will of God for your life. But I would beg to differ it because I would have to ask you this question. Then how do you explain the martyrs? Uh, because six times of the apostle Paul, it says, I am doing the will of God. I was called to be an apostle by the will of God. And, and Paul was beheaded. So I just want to pick up here and just read a, just a page and a half to you. I just think it's just fascinating how God puts it and, uh, and how he gave me revelation on this. And I'll just start on on page 99. Have you ever thought that Jesus dying on the cross was the will of the Father? The awful way that Jesus was crucified was his Father's will? Sometimes we like to paint a picture of God's will as a Van Gogh, a modern view of the present times, instead of a Picasso, a bit of abstract, an abstract view. Would God allow a moment of your peace to be obscured in order for a lifetime of peace to be instilled? Yes. <laughs> I don't think God hides our peace, but I do believe he allows our choices to evacuate our peace. Going a little further, he fell on his foot, face to the ground and prayed, My father, is if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Um, in Luke it says, And he began in anguish, and he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground, like drops of blood. Praying that his father would allow his cup his father's will to pass him by, but not my will, Jesus says, but your will be done. This does not resemble the peace you and I have been told about, but nonetheless, it is peace. Sometimes we think of peace as an absence of trouble, but in reality, peace is being able to walk out the will of God in the midst of your troubles. Peace allows you to be able to withstand the crucifixion, the crux of your infliction. Amen. Amen. Maybe we think God's will is that we never experience trouble in this life. But God's word clearly states that we are to expect trouble and plan on it because it will come according to John 16, 33. I told you these things so that, that in me you may have peace. In this world you would have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen. Here's a list of the martyrs. And it came from Fox's Christ, uh, Christian Martyrs of the World. Stephen was beheaded. Uh, James, all of these were, all these people that were called by God, all these martyrs, James, Philip, Matthew, uh, another James, Matthias, Andrew, Mark, Peter, Paul, Jude, Bartholomew, um, Thomas, Luke, Barnabas, Simon, and John. They were all killed for the cause of Christ. And in six times in the New Testament, it says Paul, as, a, as an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, it was God's will that Paul was an apostle, but Paul was beheaded in Rome for the very thing God had willed him to do. We like to fantasize about the will of God, uh, the will of God in a field of daffodils beside a stream flowing with crystal clear water. We pray for God's will as flippantly as we pray for one another at times. How many times have we said, I said, and said, I will pray for you, then our words fell silent upon the ground of good intentions, walked upon with guilt and shame when the person says later, thank you so much for praying for me. How authentically do we want the will of God in our everyday lives? That is my question today. How authentically do we want the will of God in our lives? Um, it is the peace of God there while we are in his will, even if his will doesn't look like peace? We must consider the martyrs. Um, where they are in the will of God, if so, did their death resemble the peace you're familiar with? No, not me. Could it be the peace we have been taught about uh, may be incomplete? Not, not null and not void altogether, just incomplete. The peace that we have been told. 
I believe we have the kind of peace the martyrs experience. I believe in the midst of death, there can be life. How many times have you prayed Philippians 4, 7? And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and, and minds in Jesus Christ. What do, you, what do we think the peace of, the, this pastor is talking about? Peace is not uh, po positive thinking. You can't talk yourself into peace. You can't tap your heels three times like Dorothy and you're back into the house peace built where Toto is wagging his tail and the tin man's heart is thumping at the perfect rhythm with the radio. The scarecrow develops a brain. The lion has courage and the wicked witch is dead. No, peace is a condition of the mind. Whatever goes into our minds predestines our words. A martyr's death certainly transcends all of our understanding. Okay, that's just where I want to end. That just came out of the book. And I just want to just um, give you the hope today. Listen, if you're praying for God's will, and you may say, well, you know what? I really want God's will in my life. But, and you say, and then God calls you over to Africa. And you may serve there 30 years in Africa as a missionary and then die in Africa. And you, and, but you got, listen, this is a thing. And this is a thing for me too is that when we pray for the will of God, we got to say, how serious are we about the will of God in our lives? Because his will could lead us straight to our death. And we've got to know this for sure. Do we really want the will of God in our lives? Or do we just say that, like I said, as flippantly as sometimes we say, oh, I'll pray for you. And then we walk off and forget to pray. You, when you ask for God's will, I pray to God that you were serious about his will in your life. Because I know this for a fact in my own life. When I pray for his will, I know his will. Many times people will say, especially when I go in the prisons to minister, they'll say, will you pray that I get, you know, that I get a light sentence? Or you pray that I just, you know, that, that I will have favor with the judge. And listen, I will pray. This is what I tell them. I will pray for God's will for your life. That's what I'll pray because listen, if you get out early, you might be tempted to go back and there may be still work God wants to do to you, do with you while you're in prison. So an early release is something I never pray for because I'm not going to pretend like I know exactly what they need. God and God alone knows what they leave. So I pray for God's will and I just want to challenge you today and encourage you today to take it a bit more serious when you say, I want the will of God. Because Apostle Paul, like I said, said it six times, by the will of God, I was called to be apostle. And he was beheaded, but he was in the will of God. Jesus died a terrible, gruesome death, but that was the will of the Father. So I think we take it all too lightly sometimes when we say, you know, I'm just playing for the peace of God. I mean, for the will of God. And, uh, we need to know that, it, do you really, you need to ask yourself, do I really want the will of God um, in my life? And do I really want to lead out that will, even if it leads me eventually to my death doing it? Mm, it's a serious question today. So I just challenge you to take a moment and just pray about that. And that's my challenge. And the vertical hope today is that you have a choice. <laughs> You have a choice. Amen. Amen. Choices are for the living. <laughs> God bless you all. Bye-bye.